everybody. Welcome back to Looking at Hollywood, starring our host, Skippy Lowe. Today we have a talent extraordinaire, an international film star. We have the great, the one and only, Mr. Cesar Romero. And this is, gives me my opportunity to finally thank him for all the wonderful things he's created that I've been able to enjoy. I mean, without Cesar Romero, I never would have been able to have a Caesar salad. Without Cesar Romero, I never would have been able to stay at Caesar's Palace. And without Cesar Romero, we never would have had Sid Caesar. So why don't we have some champagne with Caesar and Skippy? Caesar, you were telling me before you were, went to prep school. Your family sent you to a prep school? Yes, I went to collegiate school in New York. Right. Riverdale Country School first and then collegiate school. Uh huh. But uh, my father had lost everything in the sugar market crash, so when I. I didn't go to college, but he got me a job at the National City Bank ah. in Wall Street, and uh -huh. I hated it. You know. Did you really? Oh, yes. Is that where Cesar Romero became a ballroom dancer then? No, I was always a good dancer. I was always a great dancer as a kid. Uh -huh. My Lord, yes. Uh -huh. I started dancing when I was five years old. Really? I learned how to dance with the cook in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we had a Puerto Rican coach we had for years, and she uh -huh. used to love to dance. She used to dance me around the kitchen. Uh huh. But uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I was on that list, and I went to all the dead parties in New York, you right. know. And I, uh, I had a friend of mine, Elizabeth Higgins, who was a beautiful dancer, and she wanted to dance professionally, and she had the approval of her family. Right. And she said to me one day, she said, let's you and I be a dance team. We can work in all those wonderful nightclubs that existed in New York in those days. Right. So I said, fine, you know, because dancing was fun for me. Mm -hmm. And I used to get together with Liz at night after I finished working at the bank. Right. And then one day she said, look, how much money are you making at the bank? Well, I was only making $17.50 a week. <laughs> And I paid seven fifty for my room, and I lived on the other ten bucks. You could do that in New York in those days, you know. Uh -huh. This is back in 1926. And uh, my family were living in New Jersey. They didn't know what I was up to. So I didn't want to say I'm, I'm only making seventeen fifty a week. So I said, I'm making $25 a week. Uh -huh. And she said, well, if you quit your job, I'll pay your salary so we can work all day and rehearse all day and go out and give some auditions. Uh -huh. I said, fine. So I quit my job and I got a big raise in salary right <laughs> off the bat. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we went out and gave, uh, gave auditions and we got a job in a musical comedy called Lady Do. Lady Do. Lady Do. The star uh -huh. of the show was a female impersonator. Uh huh. Yeah, the, Do you remember the name of that female impersonator? Because it was, it was very known, rare those days. He was known as uh, the Creole Fashion Plate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. That's an old fashion. He, he, he and. Uh, what was his real name, dear? Uh, Carl Norman. Carl Norman. Car Carol Norman. Uh -huh. Carol Norman. Carol uh Norman. -huh. He was a big star in those right, days. Right, exactly. So that's what started us off, and I danced uh, for the next four years with her uh -huh. and uh, other partners. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a call from an agent, Chamberlain Brown. Right. You know, he he handled all the big people in the theater in those Broadway days. Broadway stars, oh, all yes. that, yes, of course. And he said, do you think you can play the lead in Strictly Dishonorable? <sighs> well, I, you know, <laughs> what could I lose? I said, sure, you uh -huh. know, I never played uh -huh. a part. Uh -huh. And um, he got me an appointment with uh, Chamberlain Brown and Antoinette Perry. Right. You know, at the one, the Tony Awards, the name for her. You know? Right. And, and they said, well, what have you done? And I said a few lies, you know, and they <laughs> said, well, you come back tomorrow and and uh, read for us. Uh -huh. Well, I'd seen the play, and I went and saw it again that night. Right. And when I went back the next day, I gave as good an imitation of Carminati because I <laughs> never took my eyes off him, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I guess it was pretty good because they signed me to a, son a run of the play contract. And I played, uh, I did Strictly Dishonorable uh, on the road for a year. And never studied acting? No. Never. never Caesar studied anything. never did study. No, no, no. Even now, today, even when you were in 20th and all as an actor, never took a lesson. No. Just being yourself. Well, that happens to a lot of people. It a does. lot of people have never gone never to Never acting schools. No, never. The girl, the, my leading lady's understudy right. in Strictly Dishonorable was a young girl just starting out on her. Career and she went on to become a big star mm -hmm. in the theater and in uh, motion pictures. Mm -hmm. Her name was Margaret Sullivan. Great actress. Yes. Great. One of the greatest actresses. Valentino. You and Valentino have so much in common because of 
the Latin lovers. And the well, La Come on, Cesar Romero. Everybody with a they Latin. They compared you with <laughs> Valentino. Well, because a you came to Hollywood, really. But a Latin name. Anybody with a Latin name was compared to, no, to Valentino. No, not just not anyone with a Latin name. You happen to be the tall, elegant, dark, swaddies. Yeah, well, I played a know. lot of mugs and uh, Gangsters. You did gangster gangsters. films. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Tell me about those movies, your gangsters, cowboy oh. movies. You did cowboy films? Well, uh, not too many cowboy. Well, you the, did the, a couple, I Cisco did, Kid. The, the Cisco Kid. I did, you had a series. I did si uh, six Cisco Kid pictures. You did six of them? Oh, yes. That was a series, like? Yeah. Saturday afternoons, I used to see them. My mother used to take yeah. them to the theater on Saturday afternoon, oh. Annie, and I used to go see the Cecil kids. But I, uh, you know, I did my first picture at MGM. Was that your first uh, at the MGM? Yeah, The Thin Man. The Thin Man MGM was your... MGM brought me out here, you know. Right. They saw me in a, a Ben Piazza, who was the uh, casting director for MGM, saw me in a play, uh -huh. and he came back and said, I'd like to make a screen test of you, and I did, and uh, there was a, the result of that test, uh, they, they signed me to a contract. But I didn't last with them at all. It was a contract for one picture, option of another picture, right. you know, option of six months. Because you were a 20th. Actually, you were a 20th well, century Well, I know, but I was, a, I was a universal for three years before that. Oh, how about the shadow laughs? Come oh, on. that was—that was your very first. Drill? Well, that was in New York. Oh, was that in New York? Oh, that was in New York. I don't consider that at all. Really? I, I was practically practically an extra in that picture. Okay. You know. Uh huh. No, I, I I don't consider that my my first picture. <laughs> what did you do at, uh, at Universal? You said you were Universal. Universal, I I played opposite. The, my first picture at Universal was opposite Fay Ray. Fay. <laughs> and a picture called Cheating Cheaters. Uh huh. And I did. Uh, uh, Diamond Jim Brady, you right, know, with, uh, right. oh, and I did a lot of corny pictures up no, there. No, you did not do corny pictures. Armored you know what you did? And, you did entertaining pictures. Today, they're not entertaining. They're, well, th those days, look at Caesar. Think, really. Watch the movies today. You, yes, you, it's, oh, listen, it's very different uh, today. My God, they, the industry is different. Like what? Tell well, me. Well, I mean, the, the studios don't, uh, they, they don't control. System. They don't have a system. Uh, of course not. The studio, most of the production in Hollywood today is, is television. Mm -hmm. It's not motion pictures. Motion pictures are done all over the country, all over the world. Right. I see. Hollywood is no longer the motion picture capital of the world. That's... Uh, how, <laughs> how was it for Cesar Romero when you first arrived here in Hollywood, Cesar? You were well, young. You were dashing. It, but it, going was, to it was wonderful. We were all under contract to studios. And everybody knew each other from all the different studios, right. you know. It was like a big family. Uh -huh. And there was a very definite motion picture colony in those days. Right. And within that motion picture colony was a very elegant society. At all the social functions in this town, you'd see every big star would be there. Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, Douglas Fairbanks. I mean, everybody. Right. Everybody. There was a social thing in Hollywood, and, and uh, you know, Mary was the queen, and uh, mm -hmm. Marion Davies, the wonderful parties she used right. to give, you know, uh, Hearst would come in and, and have the studio uh, 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 turn the two tennis courts out of the beach into anything she wanted, yes. a Spanish town, a circus. Uh -huh. I mean, those days are gone forever. But I'm so glad that I had all those years, because it's so very different now, you know? Uh -huh. There's, the, 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 you, you don't have that feeling of uh, uh, community together, the right? Pe you know, but it, it was glamour. That was well, real of glamour. course it was glamorous. People and, never used to and go it was out a, without their makeup or their hair started. And, it was, a, and, the, it was very and everybody was dressed properly, right? At all times, never saw jeans, no, ever, or sneakers, or sneakers, and open shirts. Yes. And uh, uh, at openings today, you see people in shirt sleeves and open. Okay. Come on, movie stars. They wanted to see movie stars. That's what Hollywood was. It was a fantasy land. It was real. It was classy then, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it sure was. Cesar Romero, you go out. A lot in this town. Yes, a lot I do. with Civil Brand every night practically. How do you do this? What what is your secret, Caesar? Well, this, you're this, not a young man, you know. No, no, you're, I'm, I'm, you're in your what? Eighties? I'm, I'm eighty five. And he looks marvelous. Eighty <laughs> Annie. I'll be eighty six <laughs> in <laughs> four months. <laughs> eighty six, Caesar Romero. Oh well, sure. Getting back to Hollywood. I've been around a long time. <laughs> yeah, you did a movie I loved at twentieth. What happened to twentieth? Was it was your first film at twentieth? Because I love that studio. Well, my first picture, 20th Century Fox, was, uh, my first picture was Zanuck. 
Zanuck. Well, yes. I was. I Carol. did three pictures for Zanuck while I was still under contract to Universal. Oh, really? He borrowed me. I did Clive of India right. with uh, with uh, Ronald Coleman and Loretta Young, mm -hmm. and I did uh, Cardinal Richelieu. I played opposite Maureen O'Sullivan in it. Right. You know, You're Cardinal right. Richelieu with the, with uh, um, the star uh, George Arliss. George, yes. You know. Uh huh. And then I did Metropolitan. Ah. With the Lawrence Tibbet, Tibbet, and I played opposite Virginia the Bruce opera in it, you know. Wonderful, Lawrence Tibbet. And, uh, and uh, Alice Brady. Uh huh. Those are all when 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 Zanuck was making his pictures on the uh, on the, on the uh, lot, United Artists lot. lot. It was it was just uh, it was just twentieth uh, century pictures. Mm -hmm. Then he moved to, uh, to Fox, and it became twentieth century Fox. And I did the first picture under contract, still at Universal. Right. I, I did a the picture called. Called "Show Them No Mercy." It was the first picture on the Fox lot. Who was in it? No, no big no stars. stars. Uh, Bruce that Cabot. was the first film on the lot. Bruce Cabot, Rochelle mm -hmm. Hudson was the was the girl. Uh -huh. Warren Heimer, and uh, you know, uh -huh. it was a great, wonderful picture. It was one of my favorite pictures. It and then I did. Why still, is that your favorite picture? Because senior? it was a good picture and it was a damn good role. Uh -huh. We were a bunch of kidnappers, you know. In those mm -hmm. days, there, there were a lot of big kidnappings around the country, and mm -hmm. it was uh, very timely. Uh -huh. But then I did, and I was still under contract to Universal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I did uh, uh, Clive of India. I mean, um, uh, we Willie Winky. Winky, right, right. See, you know, Caesar, I love this lady so much, and I'm sure you do too. You must have great fond memories, Betty Grable. Oh yeah, well, love I, Betty Grable. I did. I grew up as a child I did with about her. Four or five pictures with Betty. You brought a clip, and I want to show you. I'm going to surprise you with this clip. I love this clip. It's great. I love this movie of Betty Grable and you in this film. Well, let's show it. Huh? Give me an opportunity to dance in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, let's, okay. Yeah, let's see it. Let's great. see Cesar Romero and Betty Grable. All right, let's see okay. it. <laughs> Come in. Vicky. Victor Prince. Why, I thought you were all those lovely surprises. <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. I thought so. Time has only succeeded in making you more exquisite. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Phoebe. You haven't changed. <laughs> Vicky Lane in person. Not a facsimile, but the real thing in the flesh. And a couple of pounds too much of it. That was always one good thing about dancing with you, Victor. You were so strenuous, you kept me down to 110. That wasn't the only good thing about dancing with me, I hope. <laughs> uh, couldn't we have a little chat? Five minutes, Miss Lane. Oh, thanks, Tommy. I'm sorry, Victor, but the show must go on. Uh, Phoebe, will you tell Dan I'd like to see him before a number? Oh, Victor. Uh, gosh, it's been almost a year, hasn't it? A year of thinking of you, Vicky. No, there wasn't a day of my tour that I didn't miss you. I kept seeing your reflection in... Louisiana bayous and Arizona sunsets. No one could ever replace you, Vicky. There'll never be another victor in Victoria. Come back, Vicky. Oh, that's nice, Victor, but... I've got the finest hotels in the country lined up, all of them waiting for you. And of course, you know, my heart is waiting, too. Well, I've got 2,000 people waiting for me, so I... Oh, Vicky, I've got a new step. I call it the victor. Oh, it later, goes like victor. this. Oh, Am I late? See you, I'm late. Goodbye. Oh, oh, God, wow. Caesar, that's so good. <laughs> Betty Grable, working with Betty Grable. Uh, beautiful lady. Beautiful. Just beautiful. She was wonderful to work with. Was she? she? Yeah, she had a lovely sense of humor. Uh, she was a lot of fun to work Harry with. Harry James was in this? Yes, that's where... Uh, John Payne. John Payne. Oh, Carmen God. Miranda. Carmen Miranda. Charlotte, Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, Charlotte and, Greenwood, uh, the ladies of the ladies. Edward Everett oh. Horton. Uh-huh. It was a very great cast. Carmen Miranda. Must have been very close to you guys. Latin and well, carrying on. Was she, yeah. was, she, was she crazy and there a lot on no, the No, she really wasn't in real life. Really? You know, but she she, uh, she she worked that way, you know. She murdered the English language. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, she, when she started, you know, she was very new and, and uh, uh, she was a... Uh, a novelty, uh -huh. you know. People uh -huh. had never seen anybody like that before. Big platforms like that. That's right. <laughs> Tiny little girl. So she was she was very popular there for a while. Uh huh. But towards the end, Carmen had trouble, you know, because she never changed. Same thing. She never changed. She was still singing. You know, and by that time, 
Yeah. After a few years of that, it, right. it was no novelty anymore. Right, right, right. So right. towards the end, you know, she was having a hard time. Did Betty Grable meet Harry James? Were they married at that time, or no, did they meet on the set no. and they got fell in love and they no, got married? No, they weren't married at that they time. They weren't. No, indeed. How did that's they? what started that? That's uh, what started. Certainly, Springtime in the Rockies. Springtime in the Rockies. John Payne loved this guy. Great. Yeah. Ma- he was a. He never studied acting. This guy was just an ordinary good actor. Tell me about John Payne. I really liked him. Well, John, I remember John when he st- first started in the business. He and Lee Bowman uh-huh. were uh, uh, roommates. They had an apartment next to mine, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he started, uh, I think, uh, John started, he was under contract to uh, to uh, Goldwyn, Goldwyn, I think. Sammy Goldwyn, yes. Yeah. Yes, he was. When he started. But he was a very popular leading man, you know. Loved motorcycles, I know that. 20th Century Fox. Motorcycles, he loved well, yeah, he did. He was yeah. one, he was one of the Hollywood uh, early motorcycle guys before Marlon Brand and Jimmy Dean and all those guys. Oh, no, I don't remember. No, that. you don't. Oh, the, okay, I've read something about it. Tales of Manhattan. Come on, Cesar Romero, my favorite film. Your favorite film? One of my favorites. It's God, a great film. Everybody Tales. under the sun was in that picture. I know it. It was a story of a suit of tales. It's wonderful. But <laughs> I was in the episode with uh, Ginger Rogers and Henry Fonda. Fonda. Working with Henry Fonda. That's Jane. the only time I worked with uh, with Henry. I never worked with him. Never before. In all the years we were at Fox together. Is that the first time? You used to see him on the lot of And I you? never worked with Ginger either until then. <laughs> Cesar Romero, tell me about the commissary, the 20th Century mm. Fox commissary. Annie, it was wonderful. I used to go there when I was a kid. Because I did a movie there years ago for Henry King. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. But I used to go to the commissary. That commissary was the greatest in Hollywood. Tell me about that. Well, I mean, you'd go there for lunch. It was always, you know, you knew where you were going. <laughs> you, you, we had lunch in the little room on the side but there. But the people, the stars, but everybody, my God. But everybody under the sun w- w- you would have lunch there. Right, right. You saw everybody you knew. Uh-huh. It was, uh, I mean, you took it. <laughs> All day working. Going out at night. You had to go out, and you had to go to no. Searles, McCombles. Yeah, but uh, wh- wh- when we were working in pictures, we didn't go out you at didn't night. Go out. Oh, no. No, no, no. You're so, I'm sorry, I can't go out. I'm working tomorrow. Oh, I see. How was Searles those days, and McCombles, and... Well, uh, the greatest supper club we had in this town was the Trocadero. Trocadero. That was the place. Is that where... Uh, yes, that was the greatest. Who's oh. some of the stars performed there? They had a... Well, you know, they, on Sundays, they had uh, uh, sort of a... Uh, uh, con- not a contest, but uh, young performers, performers. Would come up there. You yeah. know, one of them was Ann Ann Miller. Was oh. she there? And that's how she got discovered. Oh, well, yes. Did Ann Miller get discovered to one of those places? Yeah, she was. She was. I used to see Ann rehearsing in the rehearsal hall at uh, uh, I forget who were the producers, big producers for uh, shows in movie houses. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think, yeah. No, it doesn't matter. And I saw her rehearsing mm-hmm. in one of the rehearsal halls mm-hmm. there, this young girl, you know. And then the next time I saw mm-hmm. her, she was hoofing it at the Trocadero. Uh huh. Tell but me. That was a great club, you know. It was the best supper club we've ever had in this town. Huh. Tails. You used to go in tuxedos. People used to dress really? in tuxedos, not suits. And tuxedos yeah. in the evening. Wasn't it? That's the way to go. To yeah, go to dinner, and we used to we used to have a lot of fu- affairs here at town. You've been white tie, uh-huh. white tie and tails. I remember the uh, the uh, ball that um, Carol Lombard was the chairperson for it, uh-huh. and uh, she decreed that all the women would wear white and the men would wear white tie and tails, <laughs> and it was beautiful. All the uh-huh. women were dressed in white except one. Uh-huh. Norma Shearer came in bright red <laughs> from head to foot. Uh-huh. Nobody was going to tell her uh-huh. what to wear. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Cesar Romero, what's the biggest lesson you have learned in life? Because you're 80 some years old. God, what has been the biggest lesson for Cesar Romero? My lesson has been to have tolerance for <laughs> people and respect for people. I like that. Tolerance. Tolerance and respect. Have you, you ever, have, that's nice. Have you ever turned the part down oh, yes. that you have regretted later? Oh, no. That you have regretted later? No. No? No. But I took, I th- I took one, I think, suspension years ago. Uh-huh. And then I, saw, I said, <laughs> this is for the birds, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh. because you're off salary and they attach that time uh-huh. to your contract. Right, right. 
So I said, "There's no, this is no good. So I never took a, I did what the studio told uh -huh. me to do. And I played, you know, when they assigned me to a picture, uh -huh. I did it. And I did the best job I could for them. And I had a long, long How many films has doing. Cesar Romero has done? Oh, over, About, oh, over, over 100? Over 100, yes. One of my favorites here, another one of my favorites, Captain from Castile. I'm yes. going to Tyrone Power in you. Yes. Mm. Let's show this clip. Well, clip he for, was one of my We're going to talk to him. Yes, I know. You know. Let's show this clip, Captain from Castile. Cesar Romero. Your name? Pedro de Vargas. Sign here. Where from? High in Spain. Are you a relative of Francisco de Vargas? His son, sir. I'm Hernán Cortés. Our fathers were friends. Though mine never reached the eminence of yours. Your illustrious father as well? When I last saw him, sir. I'm delighted to have you join us in this venture. If you the spirit and merit of your father, you'll prove worthy of promotion and a command. Thank you, Captain. A gentleman, a good omen. The son of Francisco de Vargas joins our company. This is Corio, the first officer of the Gallega. Mm -hmm. This is Captain Sandoval. Captain. Senor de Captain Alvarado. Welcome to the expedition. Thank you, and Captain. This is our chaplain, Father Bartolome de Olmedo. Father? And here we have Senor Juan Escudero and Senor Diego Sermeno. These two gentlemen are representatives of His Excellency the Governor of Cuba. They came from Santiago at the last moment to relieve me of my command. But I believe I've successfully convinced them that I am going to be the captain of this company, or there isn't going to be any captain. Hey, gentlemen? <laughs> and who might you be? Catana Perez, sir. One of our ladies, eh? We've quite a few in the army already. Some married and some in hopes of it. You know, sometimes I think you women will end up with more gold out of this one way or the other than any of us. You wish to inscribe your name in the role of the company, little one? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, my lord. Oh. I can't believe it. <laughs> Gene Peters. Uh, Tyrone Power, that best was, friend. You that was Gene's first picture. Was that Gene Peters' first? Yes. She her, was gorgeous. Her first picture. She was married to Howard Hughes. Well, she wasn't after. married then. Yeah, no, but this was after. Well, quite a, quite a time after, after yeah. because she married somebody else first, you Who know. Who did she marry first? I forget, but uh, Doesn't matter. Uh, 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 she was divorced, and then she yeah. married uh, Howard. Tyrone Power, best of friends. He was a flyer. He was he was a great guy. You oh, guys yes. were close well, together. You were, you, were in, you were in the flyers together. He was my Go very, ahead. very close friend. I, I had one of the one of the best experiences of my life with Tyrone. Uh, he was a... a a uh, flyer, you know, right. in the war, in the Marine Corps. Right. And I was in the Coast Guard. I, I was in, a, uh, in an attack transport out in the Pacific. And uh, we both got out of the service at the same time. Right. And we reported back to the studio. And they sent us on this uh, goodwill trip. Right. And the studio provided us with a twin-engine beach craft, and Ty did all the flying. Mm -hmm. And we flew down through Mexico. We hit every country in Central America, and we circled all of South America. We went down the western coast, down to Santiago, Chile, mm -hmm. through the past of Buenos Aires, right. up over the Guianas, the West Indies, mm -hmm. Havana, Havamini, New York, New York, California. We were 10 weeks on this trip. It's a wonderful experience. Of, you know, we met practically all the presidents mm -hmm. of the countries right. that we visited because the first person we had to meet was the American ambassador. Mm -hmm. And the ambassador introduced us to the president either at luncheon or a meeting or cocktails right. or dinner. And the most interesting ones were when we had lunch with uh, Perón and Evita. Oh, did you? In the palace uh -huh. of Buenos Aires. Uh -huh. she, was, uh, she was a charming was woman. Was she really? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. She didn't speak English. So I interpreted for you know uh -huh. because and Peron didn't speak English either, right, right? And she was very amusing. She'd sit there. She say to me, she said, "Why, do, why do the people in your country call my husband a dictator?" She said, "He's not a dictator. He's a patriot. <laughs> Isn't that right, one? You're a patriot." <laughs> <laughs> and Peron said, "See, yes." <laughs> she, and she and she would say things uh -huh. like. You're so fortunate because the people in, in your country uh -huh. uh, respect and love their artists. Right. She said, here in my country, they spit at them. She said, I know because I was an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar, Tyrone Power, what a, what a classy guy. Oh, yes. He was classy, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. And he, t he loved his work. He loved his work. He loved being a star. Uh-huh. He loved it. He, he did enjoy being a star. Oh, yes, he loved every minute of it. 
He married well, Linda Christian. Were you at the wedding in Rome when no, they got married? No, they no, no. He married in Rome. They got married, and I interviewed Linda, and she was telling me about the greatest marriage ever. In yeah, yeah, they, well. They loved him all over the world. Yes, well. Uh, and had, look, he had think, to die in Spain, his favorite place yeah. where he loved. It's not in Madrid. And you know, I was in Madrid at the time when this happened. And oh, really? I, yeah. And I was terrified, but my well, heart just broke. But I did, I do you did, believe in fate? I did the did, eulogy at his funeral. Did you really? Yes, oh. and I said, I'll never do this again, ever. Tore your heart. Oh, I, he was your best friend. And he, uh, he'd been dead about a week, you know, and mm -hmm. he just looked awful in that casket. And he do was you, married to... Uh, Annabella? No, 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 no Annabella was, was his first wife. His first wife, yes. You know. She was great, though. He should, he should never have divorced her. <laughs> or she divorced stayed. him. She divorced him. I heard this. Sure, you Tell know. me about, do you believe in fate, Caesar? Well, I guess so. Yeah. You, you know, you, you keep going on, Caesar. Let's face it, you go every night. What is Caesar Romero's secret? What do you eat? <laughs> I mean, I have to know. What is your secret? Because you look so great. No. Your hair, everything, your skin. There's no it's, secret. I there's just, no secret. It's the genes. Just trust the luck. It's your genes. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think the way you peaceful, you think peacefully. What is the day like for you? What time of the day you get up, Caesar Romero? I get up around 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Do you walk? No, I don't walk. I, uh -huh. I can't walk long distances. I have a problem with my back and my hips. You know, I have a few uh -huh. problems that I have to take. <laughs> what, is, what would you think is the greatest achievement that you have achieved in your life, Caesar? My greatest achievement was be able to be able to take care of my family. You, that's right. You take I care took of your care mother. Of my mother and my father Bob. and my sisters and my kid brother, and I put them through college. And that is wonderful. That, that was my, my greatest achievement. That is was wonderful. Was to take care of my family, and I took care of them. I had my mother and my father under my roof to the day they died. Really, Caesar? Wow. You take good care of them. That's see. That is a secret. That is that is the secret of his life. See how how wonderful. Cesar Romero, over a hundred some films, Hollywood. Oh, come on! I mean, looking back, <laughs> any regrets about anything in life? No. You have no regrets about I anything. I have been so lucky. I wouldn't dare. No, indeed. I've I've had a lot of great luck in my life. You still see all your friends in Hollywood. You still meet them at parties. All these wonderful people. Go ahead, yes. Caesar. Well, my, uh, my group of friends have, has, have changed a great deal through the years, right. you know. People have changed. Now, I see a great deal of Sybil Brand, as you know, and I see a lot of uh, She's Anne, Jeffries, Anne Jeffries. Yeah. You go and, out a lot with her. And Henny Backus. These, they're, they're my, my close. Uh, my close uh, and Lee Minnelli. She's Those are the group that I sort of... Tell me about Lee Minnelli. She's a nice lady. I've always, I've always wanted to really talk to her. I've, I've spoken to her several times. Well, what a nice lady. Yeah, she is. She is. You surround yourself with nice people, Caesar. Well, I'm sitting I hope here, so. I'm si <laughs> no, but I'm sitting here saying, God, you mentioned these wonderful names, Sybil Brand, leave me now. You surround well, yourself Sybil with... Sybil Brand is a unique person in this town. What is...